Okay, good afternoon. So this lightning session is about building Trove images with the Disk Image Builder. So I'm Kyle Henderson, and, and recently I've been working on OpenStack, Ansible, and as part of that, I've been working a little bit on uh, providing Trove capabilities to OpenStack, Ansible, and therefore been building uh, Trove images using the Disk Image Builder. So we'll go through this a little bit and quickly on the agenda, but it's only a lightning talk, but. We'll be going through uh, some of the Disk Image Builder elements, and we'll do a small example of the Disk Image Builder, and then talk about the Trove, um, Trove pieces of that, and the Trove guest agent, and then look at some of the reference uh, elements that are available in the Trove integration um, directory. So first of all, what is the Disk Image Builder? It's basically a tool that you can utilize to take a, a standard distribution input, um, and then do some uh, additions to it, and formatting on it and then build an output, either raw or QCAL, and then bring that right into uh, a glance um, and then deploy it. So it's basically you know, pretty universal, um, but for this purpose, we've been actually using it for uh, Trove. Um, so the next chart, we talk about how to install it. It just installs really easily via PIP. You can create a virtual environment and install it right into a virtual environment. Um, and then, uh, if you're actually using a VM for this, it is quite disk and CPU intensive, so you want to make sure you have enough memory um, and, and a big enough disk for it itself. And there's a few components that you'll need um, the Q, uh, EMU image, and the Kpart X stuff, stuff to get the disk image builder actually running. So, this image builder actually um, uses elements. And those individual elements are kind of run down through as, as scripts as it's building the disk image itself. So it'll take an input like a Ubuntu distro and then run down through all these different elements. Um, and it actually talks about the elements at the bottom here, all the different phases of the elements. Oops, don't have a, there it is. Um, so it actually has a pretty good, this laser isn't working, but um, it has a pretty good website about all these different elements and the stages of each one of them out in the OpenStack documentation. Um, but briefly, in, in this presentation, I'll just look at some of the, like the extra data one. That's actually where you'd pull data in from the host system into the image itself. The pre-install might be where you would set up uh, additional repositories for packages. And the install phase would be where you actually do the install of the packages, for instance. And then any post-installation, which would be like any type of configuration, or maybe you want to pull something off of the image that you don't particularly want on your image. So those are generic disk image builder um, elements or, or phases of the image build. So for, just for a small example here, when I was working on uh, OpenStack Ansible, uh, I needed to set up an image where I could use the HWE with the hardware uh, enablement kernel. So I actually uh, wrote a little example just to load that. And it's really, really simple. Um, it just creates a little install.d script. It has some you know, basic setup that you can use as a pattern there uh, from the other elements that you can use as examples. Uh, and there you can see I just do an app get. I do an install of the generic hardware uh, enablement kernel for Xenial. So it pulls that in. Uh, and then I wrote a small little script just to make sure that I can do this over and over and over without having to type in you know, all the extra um, exports and variables and things like that. So it was really, really simple just to you know, pull in an extra package and, and build your own um, image that you can run. So with Trove, i do the next one. So Trove has these reference elements. Um, it's in, it used to be in an integration uh, the Trove integration project prior to Okada, but it was actually brought into Trove as of Okada, and you'll find it down, um, down the Trove path. Um, for production images, you can kind of use these as examples on how to um, pull in all the different things that you'll need for a Trove image, um, but you really shouldn't use these for production images because they're basically for the CI, right? They do all the CI for Trove, but you can use them as examples. Um, and that's what we did when we were pulling our Trove images. So the Trove guest image requires a Trove guest agent that actually runs on the VM, and that guest agent will talk back to the different services. So you have to load that guest agent onto that image. Um, and you have to be able to actually load that, load it, and actually run it. 
Um, so that's actually, that would be required, but there's a bunch of um, optional things that you could do, like preload the database packages themselves, or you can actually load them at launch time. When I was building mine, I actually preferred to build them right into the image, so I wouldn't spend the time of downloading all the stuff and that. But you also have to you know, think about whether you want to enable SSH keys in a production environment or not. Should the user be able to get into the, the VM that Trove is running on? Um, in my case, I was just inside you know, doing my own little testing, so I enable SSH for myself, but there's other things that you might want to consider when you're hardening that image for a production environment. So it's completely up to the user to how to get that, that guest agent um, onto, that, um, onto that image using the Disk Image Builder. In my case, I was using OpenStack Ansible. So in OpenStack Ansible, they build a repository, a software repository. So I pulled that, um, the software repository, all the guest um, trove, guest trove agent stuff um, from that OpenStack Ansible and the configuration files that are built as part of the OpenStack Ansible configuration. I pulled that in to Disk Image Builder and I was able to copy it over using the elements of the, the pre-build and then do the install stuff and bring it over. Um, and I think in the CI case, they do an rsync from the controller, which is probably not recommended in a production environment because you'd have direct connections between the guest VM and the controller itself. All right, so as part of the reference elements, um, there's a lot of variables that are exposed or are used. And you can look down through some of those. They're, um, they're available in the documentation and a little bit on the, the, uh, the elements themselves. But there's a lot of different um, variables that can be set and, and actually reused. If you're looking to take the example, well, they're not really example ones, I should say, but they're the CI ones. So when we were looking down through that, we went through and found all the, the, uh, the variables and we could tweak those a little bit and reuse some of the existing elements when we were building our, our uh, our elements. All right, so then actually building um, a Trove guest, um, these are all the, the uh, elements that were used in the MySQL. And we reused some of them, but um, it kind of gives you a full list of the things that uh, you know, it actually takes to build an image. There's you know, a few things of uh, doing a pre-install, and doing the install piece and, and post-install. And part of that would be you know, actually pulling over that Trove code into the image itself so it could be started up and then pulling in, in this case, there was SSH keys to do the CI, right? And then pulling uh, all in, in the, in this case, it's a uh, trustee doing the upstart, but if you had Xenil, you'd be doing the system D configuration and doing all the necessary steps to, uh, you know, get that service up and running inside the image once it's, once it's deployed. And then finally, um, on the system configuration itself, there's just a, there's another trove guest image dot system dot comp file uh, that's either upstart or system D. And those have some um, scripts inside of them that actually configures the guest agent. Um, once it's pulled all of the data over, it runs under a certain user and stuff like that. So there's some, some startup scripts that are actually in the system D and the upstart that get run before it launches the guest agent. Um, so you want to look at those and tweak those a bit for your environment because obviously it wouldn't be the same as the CI environment there, but it is uh, pretty easy to follow and uh, uh, easy to change for like a production environment. Um, and then finally, yeah, you'd have, pre, like I said, pre-start scripts and the startup scripts. And then it just launches the, uh, you want to make sure it launches the guest agent itself. And then when you're, uh, when you're using Trove, you know, it would launch the, the VM image and then once that VM image is, is launched, then systemd or, or upstart would start the guest agent, and then it can talk back to the, the rest of the Trove component tree. So that's basically all the different components that you have to build into a disk image in order to launch Trove and have the guest agent talk back to Trove services. And that's all I had for Lightning Talk. I think I have one minute left if there's any questions. Okay, thank you.